All right, we got a fun one today. I want to talk about the CSS clamp method. Now, this is a fairly new method in CSS. Um, between December and April, December of 2019, April of 2020, within that time frame, that's when the browser started to support this. So it is a fairly new feature. But what it lets us do is provide a range for values. So anything numeric, basically. Um, here's my web page that I have right now. So with the default styles, I gave my H1 element, you can see um, I gave it a font size of uh, six REMs right here. So just refresh, make sure I got the latest, yeah. So six REM is the font size. Then I've used display flex right here for my main element, creating two columns with the sections that are inside. Now, what I want to do is I want to control the size of this font. I want to control this, the width of these two columns using clamp. So provide a range. As the page resizes, we're going to change what size we want to use for these elements. So for the H1. Now, because it is a fairly new thing, we're going to want to have two values in here. We're going to have the font size, which is the 6rem. That's the default. And then for the newer browsers that can support it, that's where we're going to put the clamp in here. And three values. One is the minimum, one is the value, and one is the max. So for our, for our minimum for the clamp, what we're going to say is I want to make my font size based off of just arbitrarily choosing here. I'm going to say if I mouse over this, uh, it's probably pretty small in your screen, but uh, I've got the rulers along the left and top of the browser. The width is just a little bit over a thousand pixels and the same thing with the height. It's about a thousand pixels. So I'm going to say that the minimum size I want is 5% of the height. So 5% of that thousand pixels, that's the minimum size. However small my screen gets, 5% of that height, that's the smallest I want for the font size. So if it's a thousand pixels, 5% of that is 50. So that's kind of like saying 2.5 REM. That's the smallest that I want this heading to get. Then the actual size, I'm going to put it as something fairly big. I'll say 8 REM. And then the maximum value. I'll use a different value. I don't have to, but I'm going to use a different value. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say 100 VW or 15 VW. So 15% of the viewport width. This was 1,000 pixels. So 150 is the biggest, and then 50 is the smallest. There we go. I'm getting something that's much larger here. So I'm getting for this screen. And then as I adjust this, you can see that it is resizing to adjust to that range that I have clamped this at. And if I want to see what the value is, let's see if I come in here and I click on my H1. So I want to come down into the style section here. And sometimes this gets moved around where they are. Computed is what I'm looking for. This gives me a list of all the computed values for all the styles. And I'm going to look for the font size. And down here at the bottom, I can see that it's 145.65 pixels. So that is not an even amount. That's not my 6 REM. It's not my 8 REM. It's some other value. And it's based on these. So as I adjust this, my computed value is going to change as well. There we go, 155.4. So we had different values. All right, now for the width of these things. We're going to change the width of these. I'm going to put this down a little bit smaller just so I can see more of the columns. There we go. So these two columns, we're going to come down here into the section. Now, my default size right now is 50 VW, 50% 50 of the viewport width. That is the width of these columns. But by default, they can shrink and grow depending on how much space. Now, if it was actually 50%, it would be sticking out because I have a gap in the middle for the column here. There's a little bit of padding on the left and the right. So it's going to be more than the actual size of the page. And we can see if I set these two values 
to zero instead of using the default value of one. There we go, we can, the heading, we can tell it's sticking off the page right here. So I want to, in here, for flex basis, the width of the two columns, I'm gonna use clamp. Again, I'm using both. I'm gonna have the 50%, so if clamp doesn't work, let's go down, let's make this 40, because I don't want it sticking off the sides of the page. But for clamp, I'm gonna say by default, I want it to be that. But the minimum size, the smallest I ever want these things to get is 20%. And the biggest I ever want them to get, let's say 45. Now we could use different units here. We don't have to use VW for all of them. I could use percentages, I can use pixels. I could say, hey, the biggest I ever wanted to get is 233 pixels. And there we are. So if I jump into here, we look at the section, we can see it is 233 pixels wide. That is the largest that I said I wanted it to ever get. We can change that to make it 433 is the biggest. So we didn't get up to 433, we got 310. So 30%, that's roughly where we are with 30%. It's a little bit over the 30%. But this is how clamp works. So we have a minimum value, we have a maximum value, and then the value that we're aiming for, the default, which will then be modified, if it's a percentage or a, a value based on the viewport. And that's it. That is the CSS clamp. There is this link that I'll provide for the clamp. You can see it's a fairly new thing supported in the browsers just in the last few months. And I'll also include the link to the MDN page. So you can take a look at that as well. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.